Hi everyone, welcome back to my video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a shrimp tank for Caridinia shrimp with underground filter box. I found that this method works the best for keeping high-end Caridinia shrimp such as Taiwan and Pinto shrimp. And once I tried this method I had a much better result compared to traditional method with the thick layer of the soil at the bottom of the tank which I used before. I learned this method from Darik, probably one of the biggest shrimp breeder in Asia. Darik runs his own business which called Shrimp Affair and has a physical shop in Singapore where you can come and buy shrimps and equipment. He has more than 20 years of experience in shrimp keeping and he tried every single method of filtration in the past and he chose UGF method which works the best for him. He has many hundreds of shrimp tanks and he mainly breed Caridinia, Neocaridinia and Sulwesi shrimps. And all his shrimp tanks equipped only with one UGF filter box. Tarek is a very generous guy and he shares his experience with everyone who's interested in shrimp keeping hobby. He doesn't have any secrets with you guys and he gave me tons of information and answered on all my questions even before I bought something from him. I'm going to leave a link to his Facebook page in my description box below. For this method you need an active soil, bacterial powder and acrylic or glass UGF filter box. I'm going to explain in more details how to make and where to get this box at the end of the video. It's very important to choose good quality active soil for the tank. High end Caridinia shrimp, or also known as a shadow shrimp, prefers pH below 6 and ideally close to 5.5. And your soil should be able to lower pH of the water to this level and keep it this way for at least a year. I would recommend using ADA Amazonia 1 soil, which I think is the most popular among the breeders. And the problem is that this soil is not very easy to get and it's depending where you are and if you can't find this soil, you need to look for some other options available in your country. I would also recommend an active soil called Easter Shrimp pH 5.5. It can lower pH to about 5.5, 5.7 range from my experience and is more affordable than ADA Amazon. In my shrimp tank setup I'm using bacterial powder which I bought from Shrimp Affair. As an alternative option I can recommend SL Aqua Magic Powder which also works well from my experience. It works as a food to grow biofilm in your tank which is very important for your shrimp especially for your baby shrimps. As a first step you need to fill the box with the soil and add a little bit of soil to the bottom of your tank. Just enough to cover the bottom of your tank with a very thin layer of soil. This way you avoid building up waste inside your soil which can be very dangerous for your shrimp in the long run. Then you need to sprinkle your bacterial powder on top of your soil. After you add your bacterial powder it's time to fill your tank with the water. I would recommend using pure RO water without any minerals because you are going to do a few water changes during this setup and you just waste your minerals if you add them at this stage. When I add the water I do it slowly to make sure I don't disturb much of the powder. The goal is to make the most of the powder stay on the soil and don't forget to add the water into your UGF box prior to add the water in your tank otherwise they float. I made this mistake in the past. Once you fill the tank with the water, put the light on the timer for approximately 10 hours a day and leave it for 2 weeks. After approximately 2 weeks, biofilm should start to grow on the soil and this is when I do my first water change. I change around 30 to 50% of water and I add bacterial powder to feed beneficial bacteria in the tank. I sprinkle approximately 1 gram of powder on the surface of the water and now we just wait for another 2-3 weeks. Ok, we're back now and it's week 5. The lots of algae start to grow on the glass on the surface of these tanks. I just cleaned the front glass, it was covered with algae as well. And you can compare it with the tanks below which is about 3 weeks old. And I didn't clean the glass and then uh, you can see the algae start to grow here as well. And now I want to do another water change. And before I do another water change I want to quickly check water parameters. Here you see 3 tubes, one for ammonia, one for nitrates and one for nitrates. You you can see we still have a little bit ammonia in the tanks. We need to wait for a little bit longer. I'm gonna do a water change, add a little bit more bacteria and wait for another week. And if there is no ammonia left, we can do another last water change. Okay guys, we're back and it's week number six since we start cycling the tanks. 
And now the cycle is completed. I just checked the water parameters and you can see the test tubes over here. I mean, you can see the ammonia is zero, nitrite is zero, and nitrate is quite high because all this ammonia been eaten by bacteria and converted to nitrate. So all we need to do at this stage is to do a massive water change, make sure we withdraw as much as possible the, of that nitrate, make the water nice and clean, and then of course we're gonna add in our shrimps. And now you can see the moment when I'm adding the shrimps into these tanks. And if you want to see how I selected these shrimps, you can check my previous video. At this stage we have a lot of natural food, such as algae and biofilm available for the shrimps, and I don't normally feed them for at least one week. And by now you should have lots of microflora in your tank, particularly copepods, which I believe is a good sign of healthy and well-established tank. These creatures thrive when they have plenty of available food around and they feed on biofilm and algae, the same natural food which are very beneficial for your shrimps and essential food for baby shrimps to survive. And now we're back after 5 weeks since we added shrimps. As you can see they eat eaten most of the algae and now I'm starting to feed them daily. In this tank I added few buried red steel females. They have been crossed with the black galaxies and they hatch a lot of babies by now. Most of them are black pintas, but I also can see some red pintas and blue ball shrimp plates here. The other tank with black pintas is also doing well. They haven't started breeding yet because most of the shrimps haven't fully grown yet. Recently I had a lot of questions from my viewers. They asking me how to clean this filter. And the short answer is that in most cases you don't need to do that. Sometime normally in the first month or two you might experience a small issue when your water flow from the filter is reduced slightly. It must happen due to the high amount of waste. When you start cycling your tanks you add a large amount of bacterial powder which is then eaten by microorganisms and converted to waste and it looks like brown dust. This dust might clog your soil and reduce the water flow. A quick fix would be to poke it with the tweezers and simply rotate them to disturb the soil. The dust will settle to the bottom of the filter and then water flow should be back to normal. This might be a link to another slight issue. The dust eventually can be lifted out from the filter into your tank and muddy your water. Again, it mostly happened in the beginning and should be settled in a few months. You can easily fix this issue by adding a sponge filter to polish your water. Another thing you might be experiencing is that over the time your soil at the bottom of the tank might move to the back of the tank. It's mostly due to your shrimp always digging the soil and with the help of the water flow it eventually moving towards the back. It's not ideal because it will create a thicker layer of the soil in one place which can link to building excess wastes inside the soil. So what I normally do is I move the soil back to the front with a small net. You don't need to distribute it over the bottom of the tank, instead just create a pile at the front and your shrimp will do the rest. Ok, now let's talk quickly about water change. I would recommend changing 10% of the water weekly and adding it slowly back into the tank to avoid quick pH changes. Your fresh RO water normally has a high pH and it slightly increases pH in your tank when you do water changes. After each water change I normally add a little amount of bacterial powder to feed beneficial bacteria in the tank to maintain biofilm growth and I don't feed my shrimps that day. This is the only time I add powder food into my tanks once a week after water changes and the rest of the time I feed my shrimps with solid food daily. And now I'm gonna show you quickly how I make these UGF boxes. A lot of you guys asking me where to buy these boxes, how to make them, so now I'm gonna show you how I do them. If you can order acrylic glass online made to measure that would be much easier but if you can't you can just uh, make it from the glass like a, and silicone like I made this one. Uh, I might be do the later video uh, on how to do it from, from glass yeah so uh, today we're just gonna concentrate on how to make them uh, how to make the filters yeah. So this set is very great so if you can buy this set it's called Easter uh, uh, Underground Filter Accessor accessory system yeah so if you can buy this set that would be fantastic so if you if you look for this set online try to find them I only find one seller in UK who sell them and he he is on eBay so it's um, he, he's selling sometimes sometimes not so let me just show you what included in this set so in this set 
you have you have this tube extendable tube you have two plates uh, which you can uh, basically clip together but you don't want to because it's only designed for one box and you have this thing to attach the tube uh, because it has some uh, pins yeah, just to attach the two plates together so you, they stick out a little bit so you need to cut them off so you just take the knife and then cut it with a knife just like this okay we cut this one you can see that you don't need to throw it away instead you just put it in another slot like this let me just try it okay like this so yeah, and you close this gap because you don't want this gap otherwise your soil goes through the gap unless you put the sponge on top of this plate so you do you cut all of them okay done you see it fits completely perfect here then also you need to cut this thing yeah what you need to do when you order these boxes, if you can make, find, the, find the company who made to measure these boxes. So all you need to do, uh, ask them, you need to measure this plate with, and yeah, with the basic should be the same. And tell them the internal measurements. So this one, for example, I think it's like 147 by 147 millimeters. It's 14.7 centimeters, yeah. And you just ask him, let's make this size. It's 14.7 by 14.7 and by 10 centimeters or something, or 11 centimeters, I make it normally. Same, I made this glass, you see? I'm probably gonna make another video to show you how to make this glass box, yeah, from glass. What if you cannot find this set? I have another option for you. So if you can't find this set, because this set is, is, is perfect, you just come with everything, yeah, but, and it's uh, perfectly fit like this, yeah. But if you cannot find this set, <coughs> you might find these plates. I, I found this on eBay and they came from China. Very cheap plates, I think I paid $5 for 10 of them or something like this. So, and you also can find this like typical underground uh, lifting tube yeah this also can be easy to find on eBay or Amazon or something other website Google or something so when you buy this thing you might buy you, you might get your box which is slightly bigger than this plate for example this one and you have some gaps around um, yeah that's fine we can put a sponge here but first we need to attach this tube you see this tube uh, come with a different fitting which is not fitting to this uh, plate so you need to think something about it yeah I normally put it like in the middle here at the back and then just to cut cut an opening here okay use this tool oh yes it's easy with this tool doesn't need to be very accurate because you're gonna put a sponge anyway so Cut this thing and now we need to attach the tube so we need to mark it like this and then uh, you cut first you cut from top and then you cut it yeah okay now it's perfect so basically you're gonna cut it this way uh, so when you glue it it has some support at the bottom so when you adjust it and press it it's not gonna crack and, and push down yeah accidentally which happened with me so it better to do it like this way yeah uh, make sure you glue it straight don't glue it like in an angle because it's not gonna look right yeah like this I have two company glue so I need to spray this thing on the surface and then don't forget to take the level with you yeah more or less I hope table is level <laughs> table is pretty much level so. like this and that should fit perfectly, yeah. Now cut around the pipe.
here you go you have a little sponge and now your saw will not get into the bottom of the filter that's pretty much it yeah okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to find out more about this filter please check this video out and thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time cheers